Hallelujah. That was who was here this morning? Yeah, wasn't that some good stuff? Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say that was some good eating. Yeah, and uh, and uh, the Lord really blessed us in a powerful way. So my 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 first assignment is to get you to come into a, a revelation of who you are, that I am a spirit with a soul that lives in a body. Come on, tell yourself, say, I am a speaking spirit. Watch this. And I live in a voice activated kingdom. You are a speaking spirit who lives in a voice activated kingdom. So everything happens by what you say. Amen. If you change your language, you'll change your situation. Are you with me? Are you with me? So my first revelation is to bring you to a revelation of who you are. But my second full assignment is to get us some money because God wants the church blessed. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I don't have to love God and be broke. say you can't love God and be broke but third John 2 say beloved I wish above that thou mayest come on and be in even as your so God won't lay hands on yourself say God won't be blessed get that in your head come on lay hands on yourself say God won't be blessed say amen So I want to show you something real quick. Look at somebody and say low praise, low, praise, low, income, low income, moderate praise, moderate, praise, moderate, income, moderate income, high praise, high, praise, high, income. high income. Now say neighbor, neighbor. Show, me show me what you want. Now, do y'all sing this over here? You know I got the saying, right? Do y'all sing this? Jesus is my deliverer. Come on. Jesus is my deliverer. Come on. Jesus is my deliverer. I know. I know he's Say it again. Jesus is. Jesus is my deliverer. Come on. Jesus is my deliverer. Everybody say. Jesus is my deliverer. I know. I know he delivers me. How do you know? How do you know he delivers? I like her. Come on. How do you know he delivers? How do you know? How do you know he delivers? I know. I know he delivers me. How do you know? How do you know? Everybody say, How do you know he delivers? How do you know? How do you know he delivers? I know. I know he delivers. Say it again. Jesus is. Jesus is my deliverer. Say it like you mean it. Jesus is my deliverer. Come on, say Jesus is my deliverer. I know. I know he delivers. Look at your neighbor. Say, How do you know? How do you know he Sing to your neighbor. How do you know he delivers? How do you know? How do you know he delivers? I know. I know he delivers. Do they say this? I'm saying and I know. Come on. I'm saying and I know that I am. Come on. I'm saying and I know that I am. Come on. I'm saying. How about 
this. God is good. God is good. Come on. God is good to me. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's been so good to me. Come on, say it again. God is good. God is good. Hey. God is good. Oh, God is good to me. How can I let him down? Come on. How can I let him down? Hey. How can I let him down? He's been so good to me. Save my soul. Save my soul. Come on, let me hold. Save my soul from sin. How can I let him down? Come on. How can I let him down? Hey. How can I let him down? He's been so good to me. Come on, save my soul. Save my soul. Oh. Save me hold. Come on, save my soul from sin. How can I let him down? Come on. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? So good One me. more time, save my soul. Save my soul. Made me whole. Made me whole. Oh, save, save my soul, soul from sin. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's been so good to me. One more time, Jesus is. Jesus saved my sin for Come on. Jesus saved my sin for Oh. How do you know? How do you know? He's never. Come on. How do you know? He's never. Oh, how, how do you know? He's never. I know. I know. He's never. Come on, clap your hands again. Hallelujah. All right. Look at somebody and say, I'm saved and I know I am. I'm saved and I know I am. Y'all know what I'm about to sing now, right? Yes. Come on, lift your hand. Come on. I will lift up my eyes to the hill. From whence cometh my help. Come on, my help cometh from the Lord. Come on, let's change this atmosphere. Come on. He said, He will. He will not suffer thy foot. Oh, thy, thy foot, foot to me. Oh, the Lord that he be. He will. He will not slumber nor sleep. For the Lord. For the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is my shepherd. Come on, up on the sun, oh, the sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. He shall. Like you mean it. My help. Oh, my help. My help. Oh, my help. Oh, my help. Oh, my help. Come in. My help. My help. My help. Lift those hands for 30 seconds and worship. Lift those hands, open your mouth and worship. Come on, worship. Come on, worship. 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 Come on, worship. 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 Worship him. Worship him. From whence cometh mine help? My help cometh 
from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said he will not come on. The Lord, he will not slumber. Come on, for the Lord. Yes. Upon. Upon. Come on, oh, the sun, nor the moon, he shall preserve, even forevermore, for the Lord, for, for the Lord, come on. Upon, upon the right upon, upon the right on the sun, on the sun shall not smite thee by day, come on, on the moon by night, he shall, he shall preserve my soul. He Say, say my help, my help, my help, come on, all of my come it one more time, come on. Clap your hands if that's your testimony. Clap your hands if that's your testimony. If you know that you can do nothing without him, clap your hands. Say, I am. I am. Speaking spirit. Speak spirit. I, live I live in a voice activated kingdom. You were here this morning and God gave us a great revelation that we are to rule everything from the spirit realm. Say amen. amen. The weapons of our warfare are not what? No. Come on. They're not what? No. But they are? Mighty. Mighty through God through the pulling down of no. casting down imaginations and every what? High thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Amen. Right? Now, I want you to hear me because in order for God to bring us into a revelation of wealth, God don't want you rich. He wants you wealthy. And in order for God to bring us into a revelation of wealth, in order for us to walk in this place where the blessing of God is overtaking you, you're wanting for nothing, I need you to understand that nothing can happen for you until you first change the way you think. Amen. Proverbs 23 and 7 declares, as a man thinketh. All right, what does that mean? You cannot think in the basement and live in the attic. You will never live above your thought life. Come on, talk to me in here. I said you will never live above your thought life. Most of us in here are defeated before we ever get out of bed. Before you ever come to church, you're defeated because the enemy has power over your mind. The devil knows that if there is a war, there must be a place for the war to be fought. 
And the place that the enemy fights is in your what? Is in your what? Why? Because the devil knows whoever controls the mind controls the body. So his job is to get control of your thought life. Look at your neighbor. Say, 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 God is going to give me power over my thought life. You will never live above your thinking. Are you listening to me? I don't care how much you shout. I don't care how much you scream. Turn around three times. If there's no change in your mind, nothing is going to change. Repentance is not magical. The saints used to say, when you get saved, look at my hands. My hands look new. Look at my feet. My feet did too. If you had corns on your feet before Jesus, after Christ, they still there. Say amen. amen. But repent comes from the Greek word metanoa. Meta, change. Noah, mind. Repent means to change your mind. Well, I used to have a mindset of going to the club. Now, I change my mind and walk away from the club. Come on, talk back to me in here. When I used to involve myself in ungodly behavior, now because of my repentant mind, I don't do what I used to do. Because 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? Come on, I need y'all to talk back to me now. Old things are Behold, all things have become. Look at somebody say, change your mind. mind. Say it again, change your mind. mind. Tell somebody else, change your mind. mind. So God wants you blessed. Oh, God wants you so blessed, you be shocked. But most of us will never get there because we are defeated in our thinking. You're you're, you're defeated in your mind. The enemy rides in and out of your mind at his own will because you feed your mind with the wrong stuff. The greatest investment you can make is your mind. I told that the one lady, she said, Prophet, I disagree with you. The greatest investment I can make is my children. I said, if you don't have a mind, you can't take care of your children. Your mind is a garden. You got to take care of your mind. Cultivate your mind. Feed it with the right stuff. Some of you spend more money on your closet than you do your mind. You're quiet in here. You look good, but you can't think past go. Are you with me? So Romans 12, Paul says... I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. If you want to give me a present, present your body. A living sacrifice. Holy and unto God, which is your. And be not to this, but be ye by the of your. Transformation cannot take place until there is a change in my mind. Are you with me here? Lay hands on yourself. Say, I can have whatever I want to have. Come on, talk like you got power and talk like you believe what I'm saying. Say, I can have whatever I want to have. Be what I want to be. Go where I want to go. As long as I believe in the God in me. Now wait, what do you mean the God in me? I need you to first of all stop disconnecting yourself from God. Because see, you see God in the sky. First of all, God does not live in heaven. 
Y'all quiet in here. I said, God, you talking about some God in heaven? God don't live there. God, yes, sir. I'm a preacher if y'all let me. God don't live in heaven. He's everywhere. If, if you put God in heaven, you're saying that God has a circumference and there's a place that can house God. Somebody wanted to build God a house. He said, David, how you going to build me a house when the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool? But God raised up an apostle by the name of Paul, born out of due season, and said, know ye not that your, he don't live in temples made with hands. Y'all might be quiet in here. But know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You need to shake your neighbor and say, he lives in me. You don't hear what you just said. You got to catch the revelation of that. The same God who spoke to the sun. I'm talking about that God. He swung the sun 93 million miles in the sky. Told the sun you take the day shift and told the moon you take the night shift. I'm talking about God, y'all. Who put the sweet and peaches and gave us something in America called peach cobbler. Y'all quiet in here. I'm talking about God. Who put the sour in the lemon and gave you lemonade. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm talking about God who put the meow in the cat, the bark in the dog, the moo in the cow. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm talking about God who stepped out of nowhere in the somewhere and said, let there be. That same God who spoke everything into existence is walking in me. So you better be careful how you treat me because I got God in me. Are y'all with me? If you're with me, shake your big head. Say, I'm with you. I'm with you. Now, stay with me now. You got to stop disconnecting. Colossians 1. Christ in you. The hope of glory. I got God in me. 1 John 4 and 4. Greater is he. Then he that is y'all quiet in here. So, because I have God in me, I can do what I want to do, have what I want to have, go where I want to go, as long as I remain God conscious. You with me? Yes. So what happens is the enemy fights to get your mind messed up. Yes. See, this thing of me talking about God want to give you money, you'd be surprised how many people are so religious that when you start talking about money, they talk some, well, I just love the Lord and I believe if you just love the Lord, you're going to have money. Well, some of y'all love God right now and you broke. <laughs> Amen. Amen. One preacher told me, you shouldn't talk about money. I don't want no money. I just love the Lord. I said, well, what you go to work every day for? <laughs> what you working for if you don't want no money? I know you ain't working because you just love to work. One, one, one man told me the other day, he said, when I sow, I don't sow for money. I'm just giving God back what he gave me. I'm not sowing for nothing. I said, how dumb thou art. How dumb thou art. No farmer puts a seed in the ground not looking for a harvest. Now, I need you to tell your neighbor, say neighbor, neighbor. 
You got the wrong one. Find somebody to get happy. Say, neighbor, neighbor. I'll never, I'll never be, broke be broke another day in my life. Now listen, if you want to be broke, you don't like me. Because it bothers me to see people loving God with all their heart. Love, I mean, I know people that love God and they broke. And let me tell you something, money gives you energy. Oh yes, it do. When you ain't got no money, you want to stay in bed all day. When you got money, you get up and go everywhere. Ain't nobody got to call you. I called, I, called, I called the lady in Jacksonville, older lady, and I said, Mother, how you doing? She said, oh, I'm not doing too good. I said, well, I want, I, 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 I'm just calling, I, I want you to come hang out with me. Well, I don't feel too good today. Well, I was going to take you shopping. Well, I guess I can throw on a wig real quick. Money gives you energy. Come on, I need y'all to hear. Am I right? You can praise God a whole lot better when your bills are paid. Repeat after me. Say more than enough. More than enough. Too, much. Too much. Overflow. Overflow. Come into my house. In my house. When? Now. When? Now. When? Now. Shout like it's already there. <laughs> now. But before you get it, you got to change your thinking. See, God can give you money right now, but if you don't have the mind to keep it, you won't have it for long. Right now, if, if, if you know, we have what we call the ghettos or the hood or the projects, the post side of town where everybody live, certain people live, if I decide to go in the ghetto, the product, the hood, whatever you call it, and I walk up to a man and give him $3 million and gives him a mansion, I promise you, in six to nine months, the $3 million will be gone. And that mansion going to look like the ghetto. Because I changed his location, but I didn't change his... You know, y'all know Oprah Winfrey, right? Y'all yeah. know Oprah, right? Yeah. You know, she got her network. Yeah. And she got this girl come on there named Ayana Van Zandt, whatever. She got a show called Fix My Life. Some years ago, she came into $30 million. Barbara Walters offered her a contract. $30 million. In two years, she was broke. But don't be shocked because statistics say 98% of the people who win the lotto are broke in two years. Now, do you know folk who win the lotto be getting like 80 and 100 and 200 million dollars? How do you lose that much money in two years? A fool and his money will soon depart. In, in two years, she broke. Oprah say, Ayala, whatever her name is. <laughs> you around here fixing everybody else's life. Tell me how you, she, how you lose $30 million in two years. She tell Oprah, I already fixed my life. I could tell you what's wrong with me. She say, what happened? She said, Oprah, what you don't understand is when I got my first check from that contract, mm -hmm. 
That first check was enough to last me for the whole year. But because I was on welfare, I thought it was only going to last for 30 days. So I spent a year paycheck in 30 days because I had new money, but I had a welfare mentality. I'm trying to help somebody in here. Some of you in here cannot tap into the blessing of God because you think being blessed is all about keeping up with everybody else. You're trying to impress people. God wants to bless us, but God ain't giving you money for you to walk around talking about what you got. Come on, come on, talk to me. Talk, 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 talk. God wants us to have money, and I'm not talking about fronting like we got money, because some of y'all look like you got money and ain't got nothing. Hello, and I ain't talking about credit, I'm talking about cash. Are you hearing me? Tell your neighbor, say, God wants you to have money. Now listen, I told somebody the other day, one man got mad at me. He said, I don't like you talking about money. I said, well, let me tell you something. If there's any part of the Bible you don't want to believe, at least believe the part that he wants you to have money. <laughs> An atheist walked up to me the other day. I meet all a bunch of folk. Atheist walked up to me. He said, I don't like that Bible. I said, you don't? He said, uh-uh. I said, I wouldn't like a book that called me a fool either. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Y'all finally caught it. Y'all finally caught it. So I want you to get in your, okay, so, 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 so prophet, if anything will happen in my life, I got to change my mind. What, 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 how, how do I get my mind right? Well, the gate to your mind is your eyes and your ears. Okay? What do you mean? There's a show come on television, used to come on in America a long time ago, called Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> now, I like that show. But I'm going to be honest with you. When I get done watching that show, I go to locking my doors. <laughs> I be looking through the blinds because this is if it's unsolved they could be next door to me because certain things you watch produce fear am I helping somebody there's another horror film used to come on called Freddy Krueger and Jason. If I walk down the street right now and see some bushes shaking, I think Jason about to come out them bushes. Why? Because the enemy operates off of fear. So the way I guard myself from fear is I can't watch and listen to stuff that'll cause me to think or believe anything contrary to what he said. Sometimes you got to turn off CNN, turn off Fox, because let me tell you something, when you get done watching them people talking about your money and what's going to happen, they have you thinking you're going to be broke the rest of your life, you ain't going to never have nothing. So I got to look at that word that say, my God shall supply. I don't look at television to determine my news. Look at somebody and say, that ain't my news. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. I <laughs> Do you believe that? Yes. Now, how many of you in here believe God wants you blessed? Raise your hand. Amen. All right, write this down real quick. Hurry up. Write this down. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry. I'm letting you get your pen and paper. Hurry up. <laughs> when you're ready, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. If you ain't ready, say, wait on me. Yeah. All right. Mm -mm. 
Don't write this down. I'm just talking. I'm going to tell you when to write. Most churches that have money don't have power. And the churches that have power don't have money. But if we can get a group of people that has power and money, you are a force that cannot be stopped. We're powerful. We're anointed. But because we have no money, we have no voice. Y'all quiet in here. People have money. All they rich, all this stuff. But they ain't got no power. And when you get sick, money can't buy you healing. Y'all quiet in here. So write this down. There are three lands. The first land is the land of not enough. Not enough. N O T E N O. I, am I that southern? Do I sound that bad? Pray for me. Jesus Christ. The land of not enough. In the land of not enough, right next to not enough, I want you to put justified. Put that justified. In the land of not enough, there's a religious spirit that'll make you feel justified in not having not enough. What you mean? There are some people that'll say, well, if the Lord wanted me to have more, I would have more. I'm just that little child of God at the bottom of the totem pole for Jesus. The devil is a totem pole lie. Say amen. amen. You don't have to pray and ask God, does he want you blessed? He already told you he wants you blessed. He told you if you delight yourself in him, Come on, Psalm 37, 4. He'll give you what? Are you with me? So the first land is the land of what? Land of what? And next to it, what I told you to put? The next land, which is where most of you park at, is the land of just enough. That's where most of you are living right now. Just enough to pay your bills. Just enough living from paycheck to paycheck. Come on. Just, I'm trying to help somebody in here. Just enough to make it through the month. I mean, you, you, you have enough to last you for two weeks. And you got to make your $20, $30 stretch for the rest of the month. Just enough. Next to just enough, I want you to put satisfied. Because you're living there because your flesh has become satisfied. In the land of not enough, there's a religious spirit that'll make you feel justified. But in the land of just enough, your flesh will start feeling what? Satisfied. Start feeling what? Satisfied. But the land that we getting ready to move to tonight is called more than enough. Stay with me here. And God told me, he said, son, in the land of not enough, you feel justified. In the land of just enough, you feel satisfied. He said, but if you ever move to the land of more than enough, I'll be glorified. Amen. Do you know that God wants you to live so well that when folks see you pulling up in what you drive, they say, my God, look at God. <laughs> y'all don't believe that, do y'all? Do you know God don't want you living in a house that you shame of? He don't want you living somewhere where you don't want to invite nobody there because you're scared of where you live. I'm trying to help y'all. I know y'all going to get mad at him, but I'm trying to help you. Look at somebody and say, it's changing for me tonight. If you got somebody next to you that won't talk, please tell me who they is because they're going to be broke the rest of their life because they won't change their language. Look at somebody and say, it's changing for me tonight. Shout more than enough. Too much. My God, I need you to talk with power now because see, we're breaking a stronghold over this region. And if you keep on with that little cute stuff while you being cute, the devil ain't playing. 
Say more than enough. More than enough. Too, much. Too much. Overflow. Overflow. Come, into my Come into my house. I still don't hear the right sound in the Holy Ghost. More than enough. More than enough. Too, much. Too much. Overflow. Overflow. Come into my house. When? 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 What's the first land? The land of what? And you'll feel what? Second land. Just enough. You'll feel what? God wants you to live in the land of so he can be God wants you to prosper so live in a house so nice that when folks show up the way you live at they say my God Ain't nobody but God gave you that house because you don't even qualify to have that. Come on, talk to me in here. And listen to me. The money I'm talking about God getting ready to give us ain't got nothing to do with your job. Somebody shout divine increase. Somebody shout supernatural, supernatural. Provision. provision. I'm talking about money showing up in your account and you don't know how it got there. If y'all don't shout better than that, I'm going to throw this microphone. You better hear me now. I'm telling you what I know. The Lord spoke to me last year. The Lord spoke to me last year. And he told me that Obama would be reelected as president. And I prophesied all over the country. And a lot of folks thought I had missed God because the Lord spoke to me and told me how the election was going to go. He said, the election will go one way, but at the end, it's going to shift. And if you paid attention to uh, the election in America, for a minute, it looked like Mitt Romney was going to win. Yes. But at the end, it shifted just like God said. And God spoke to me and said, I'm going to re-elect Obama, but after Obama is re-elected, the economy is going to go down. Now, right now, we're in the middle of a government shutdown. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. I'm telling you that. I, I, I know that by the Holy Ghost. But God never intended for us to be affected by what's going on in the world. Come on. There were plagues coming on Egypt, but the people of God lived in the land of Gosha. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all uh, uh, better talk back to me. I don't care who lose their house. I ain't losing my house. I don't care who go and slap your neighbor and say, I ain't going under. Now, if you know God getting ready to blow your mind before this year is out, shout like you done lost your... Hey! Hey! Sit down. Try it again. Shout more than enough. Too much. Overflow, Overflow. coming to my house. Coming to my house. When? Now. When? Now. When? Now. Yell out your address so it know where to come to. <laughs> Call out your name. Call out your name. Call out your name. Sit down. Now, y'all ready? I'm, I, I, how many of y'all ready to get what God got for you? I said, who ready for it? Him and I. I I ain't talking about nothing to do with your job. Your job is designed to keep you broke. (laughs) 
It was never designed to make you rich. It's designed to make your boss rich. It's designed to keep you in a rat race the rest of your life. My God, let me tell you something. We, we supposed to be blessed. Hey, bro, hey, brothers, we supposed to be so blessed that our wives ain't even got to work. Some of y'all sisters should have just got happy when I said that. I'm telling you. I'm in the book. We supposed to be so blessed that that woman ain't even got to work. She, she worked if she want to. But let me tell you something. Y'all work, both of y'all working. You both show up at the same time. You want her to get in the house and do everything. If she got the shan paying the bills, you ought to shan doing the responsibility of the house. I ain't shouting no more, are they? My God, ain't no money in the house. You can tell me, tell you, when ain't no money in the house, all kind of hell break out in the house. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. My God, you need a house with money. God wants you blessed. My God, husband making all that money, the wife, just do what she want to do. Praise God. You get home, everything going to be right for you when you get home. My God, ain't got no money. The sex is bad. Everything is bad. Ain't got no money. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Come on, I need you to say this with power. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Before, Before this year is out. Year is out. Unexpected. Income at my house. Now what? 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 Men, men determine your salary. God determines your income. Are you with me? All right, go to Proverbs 13. Hurry up. Hurry up. I ain't got all night. I got to hurry up. Come on. We, we got a certain window in the spirit. And while we got it open, we got to operate it. Now, let me tell y'all something else. When I go to preaching on the blessing of God and prosperity and stuff, let me tell you something. Look at that baby. Same one. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay, now, when that anointing, when that all get on me for the blessing of God, if I start saying glory to God uncontrollably, you know, it don't come on me every service, but if it come on me, in that moment, that's when you want to sow. Now, I'm just telling you that. Because when it come on me, it feel like hot honey going down the back of my neck. Now, I don't know how I know what hot honey going down my neck feel like. <laughs> Somebody say, Prophet, what you doing knowing what hot honey going down the back? <laughs> I, I, I can't explain it. <laughs> I can't explain it. But when that anointing for... Prosperity come on, I, I, I literally feel that. I, I, I just, I feel, he, look at that, that brother, <laughs> my God, God bless you. <laughs> feel it going all down my neck. So I'm telling you right now, that if that, if, if that thing come on and I start saying glory, and I can't stop, I start saying glory to God, and I, I keep trying to go on, and, it, and it, at that moment, whatever you got, or whatever you feel moved, that's when you want to sow. Because things that's been held up going to be released quick. I just told that to a woman down there in Fort Pierce. That thing came on me one of them nights. I was there for four nights. It came on me one of them nights. I started saying glory and couldn't stop. She was waiting on something for the past 12 years. She sold in that moment, and the next day got a check for $300,000. Yeah. 
I'm going to tell you what I know about the Holy Ghost. Now go to Proverbs 13. When you have it, say, I got it. Verse 22. The Bible says that a good man leaveth an inheritance. I need you to circle that word inheritance. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his what? Come on, it's on there. To his what? God wants you so blessed that you have enough to leave for your grandbabies. Now, how many people know, first of all, you can't leave nobody nothing if you ain't got nothing? But the Lord told me the other day, he said, son, if a good man will leave an inheritance to his children's children, how much more would a good God leave you? See, I got to change your thinking. See, right now, if your mama is a billionaire, And she dies and leaves your name in the will. But nobody ever tells you to two years later that your name was in the will. Watch this. You will walk around a broke billionaire. I wish I had a church in here. You are broke by condition, but you are a billionaire by position. But nobody ever told you who you are. So you walking around struggling because ain't nobody gave you a knowledge that your name is in the wheel. Well, you know why you living beneath your privileges? Because didn't nobody tell you that your daddy died and left your name in the wheel. So you walking around living beneath your privileges because you don't recognize what's yours. Are you hearing me? So stay with me here. A good man leaving inheritance to his children's children and the wealth of the who? Wealth of the who? Wealth of the who? Is what? Underline that word. Underline that word. Lay it up. Because that word laid up is what done hindered you. You thought since it was laid up, you couldn't get to it. I want you to change your confession. I want everybody to repeat after me and say, the well. The well. Come on, you, you sound Presbyterian again. Come on, let's try again. Say, the well, the well. of the sinner cometh to, to me now. Hold on now. I don't hear y'all. Say, the well, the well. of the sinner cometh to me now. now. Alright, now I need you to say it with power, not like you at the Grammy Awards. Come on. Say the wealth, the wealth of the sinner cometh the to me now. Me now. now, the reason I had us to read Proverbs 13 is I told you God going to give us some money, but in order for you to get the money, you got to locate who got the money. And Proverbs 13 just told you who got your money. Who got your money? Sinners. Who got it? Who got it? Jay-Z. Beyonce. Oprah. Come on, talk to me in here. They got my money. Who got your money? Who? Who? I don't hear you. Who got your money? Don't you act like these sinners ain't got no money. These sinners loaded. David said, I almost slipped when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. My God, you go to these, pre uh, you, you go to these sinners' houses and the way they living, my God, they be living good. And if you don't be careful, the enemy will discourage you. Especially when you know you're living for God the best way you know how. And these uncircumcised Philistines walking around here with all your stuff, it'll mess with you. Who got 
got your money. Yeah. Go to Psalm 112. Psalm 112. Hurry up. Hurry up. If you can't find Psalm, something wrong with you. If you can't find it, just close your Bible and open it up. It'll go right to Psalms. Psalm 112, verse 1. When you have it, say, I got it. You don't have it, say, wait on me. I'm waiting. Psalm 112. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that what? That what? Delighteth what? In his? Verse 2. His seed shall be? Come on. The generation of the? Shall be? Verse 3. Wealth and riches shall be in his? In his what? In his what? Start over. Who got your money? Where is it supposed to be? Who got your money? Where is it supposed to be? I need to find out why it ain't there. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Come on, hurry up now. I feel good. I feel the Holy Ghost in my baby toe. Thank you, Jesus. Deuteronomy, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The fifth book of the Pentateuch. Deuteronomy. Eight. Eight eighteen. But thou shalt remember the Lord your God. Look at me. 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 Some of you will never qualify for the blessing of God because God know when you get it, you're going to forget him. See, God want to give us money, but I'm telling you, there are certain qualifications you got the pass to get this money. It's just like a bank when they give you a loan. If you want the loan, you got to what? Qualify. Well, God is not in the business of giving you money just for you to walk around telling something you got money. And so your spirit got to be right to receive money because money, the Bible calls, the Bible calls money filthy lucre. And so you got to be careful now because if your spirit ain't right when you get money, you will take on the spirit of the money. Y'all quiet in here. Deuteronomy 8 18 say, But thou shalt remember the Lord your God. For it is he that giveth thee what? Give you what? I can't hear you. Give you what? Power to do what? So he said, The sinner's got it. It's supposed to be in your house. And I gave you the power to get it. That he may establish his what? His what? His what? All right. So what that mean? I'm not giving you money to get your hair done. Those are benefits, but that's not the purpose. I'm not giving you money for you to walk around flaunting what you got. Those are benefits, but that's not the purpose. I am giving you power to get wealth because I need people in the earth realm that if I speak to and tell you to release it, you won't fight me about it. And some of you are never qualified to give a million dollars because he can't get you to give a hundred. I'm trying to help somebody in here. Who got your money? I can't hear you. Who got it? I can't hear you. Who got it? Where is it supposed to be? In my house. And Deuteronomy 8 say he gave you what? Power. To do what? Go to Ephesians chapter 3. We got to locate this power. Ephesians 3. And 20. Now unto him. That is what? 
Now see, that scripture to me is wrong. To me. Because I don't understand why it say now unto him that when it should have said now unto him who. So, I call Paul. <laughs> and I said, Paul, you didn't go to English class. <laughs> you know, that's a second part of civil pronoun. We should have made that now unto him who instead of now unto him that. I said, you did not go to class, Paul. Paul said, you need to call Timothy. I said, go on back to bed. I called Timothy. I said, Tim. I was telling Paul that he was wrong for putting now unto him that when it should have been now unto him who, and he told me to call you. He say, oh, well, the reason he told you to call me is because I'm the one who said all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. So you shouldn't have been mad with Paul, and you can't be mad with me. You need to go talk to God. So I said, God, you're the one who made me go to school. You come up with this school stuff. Why you got me going to school to learn that you're supposed to put not unto him who if you ain't going to honor what you told me I'm supposed to put? Not unto him who, you got not unto him that. That's wrong. I talk to him like that. You know, you got to have a relationship with him to talk to him like that. Some of y'all ain't qualified to talk to him like that. God, you wrote it wrong. Now unto him who? He say, oh, there's a reason I got that there. He said, remember when Moses wanted to Free the children of Israel. And he said, who shall I tell them sent me? Tell them I am. Y'all mighty quiet in here. So because I am, now unto him. Y'all mighty quiet in here. Now unto him, that is what? To do. Come on. Come on. That you could. Oh, stop. Now some of you ain't tapped into this blessing yet. Glory to God. I feel something coming on me, y'all. Somebody. Some of y'all ain't tapped into this blessing yet because you don't think big enough. And you ain't asking hard enough. The Lord told me about two days ago, he said, son, tell the saints to stop trying to make stuff easy for me. You think I need two or three days. I'm so God that you could be one way today and it could change in a minute. Are y'all hearing me? See, there's a realm of faith that you're getting ready to tap into that while you're thinking about stuff, he's going to be done already did it. Because remember, he know what you have need of before you ask. I was over in Nassau, Bahamas. I was minding my own business in Nassau, Bahamas. And I went to the preacher house and he had two motorcycles. I don't need no bike. I don't know what to do with no bike. If somebody gave me a bike right now, I wouldn't know what to do with it. And it's proof. So I go to the, to the preacher house and, and I see bikes. And to myself, I just think, you was there. To myself, 
I just think I show it like a bike. Now, I ain't lying. I didn't say it out loud, because sometimes you, me being Prophet Karn, people will do stuff for me just because I'm Prophet Karn. But I wanted to be God. I just thought it to myself, jokingly. I sure would like me a bike. I get to church that night. And in the middle of service, I see a man Driving his motorcycle, a Ninja 1100. Red Ninja 1100. He drive it in the church. I say, sir, no bikes allowed. He say, I'm driving it in here because God told me to give it to you. Y'all quiet in here. Y'all quiet in here. See, there's a place, yes, sir, you can walk into that while you're thinking about stuff, he'll make people bless you and they don't even know why they're blessing you. Are y'all listening? I was in, I was in, I, I, I was in uh, somewhere looking at a preacher preach. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me in the service. He said, son, I said, yes. He said, buy that preacher some shoes. So I took out five $100 bills, and, and I didn't do it right then, but when I was leaving to go eat, the Holy Ghost ain't let me forget because he made him the first person that called me. I thought I could get away. <laughs> and I gave it to him. And I missed God because I should have gave him a thousand, but I only gave him five hundred. I gave it to him. I went on about my business, and the Holy Ghost uh, about 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 weeks later, months later, I was in Alabama, and a man walked up to me and gave me a yellow envelope. I said, "Praise you, God bless you," and put it in my pocket. He said, "No, you need to open it." I opened it out. It was I opened, it was ten thousand dollars cash, and the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said. That's them shoes you bought. See, you got to be sensitive enough to his voice to know when he's telling you to put seed in the ground because whenever God asks you for a seed, he got a harvest on his mind. Are y'all hearing me? Am I getting on y'all nerve yet? Tell you, who got your money? Where it's supposed to be? Deuteronomy 8 say he gave you what? Power to do what? Now 320 say he's able to do a seed and abundant above all that you can ask or think according to the power that worketh where? So everything I need is locked up. Are you listening to me? Write this down. Write this down. Hurry up. Hurry up and I'm done. We're going to get out of here. I'm done. I know you want to shout but I'm trying to get you some money. So you can shout with money. Write this out real quick. Number one, always keep God first. See, that's a principle for the blessing of God. God has to know that when I bless you, your, your money won't get more credit than me. And that's what he had to tell the children of Israel. You got to remember me because I'm the one who gave you the power to get what you got. See, the problem with most of us is we get money and we get education and we forget God. Y'all might have quiet in here. But what profit is it for a man to gain the and lose his soul? So God says, what I need you first of all, I need you to keep me first. And most of you, God is first in every area of your life except for your money. I'm going to prove it to you. If I get up right now and say, God want everybody here to jump three times. You'll jump. High five your neighbor. Mm. Turn around two times. You do all of that. Give a thousand dollars. I got to pray about that. <laughs> we get spiritual when it comes to money because we don't want to let it go. When Jesus came to church, you thought the first place he would have went to was the choir. 
But the first time Jesus came to church, the first place he went was to the treasure department to see what they was putting in the offering. Want to know why? Because if God want to locate your heart, he can locate your heart through your giving. Because where a man's treasure is, there will his heart be also. Are y'all with me here? God got to know that at any given moment, if he tell you to do something, you're going to do it. And write this down. Here's the second principle. And I'm done, and I'll give you the rest of mine, and we'll shout. But here goes the second principle. And this will make it easy for you. I own nothing. He owns everything. Say it again. I own nothing. Some of y'all can't write and talk. I'm praying for you. I own nothing. He owns some of y'all can't walk and chew gum. Let me wait till you finish. <laughs> I own. Nothing. I own. Nothing. He owns. Everything. I own. Nothing. He owns. Everything. I own. Nothing. He owns. Everything. Hey, 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 hey. Get him, get him. Hey, 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 get him. Let him look at me. What's his name? Quadi. Quadi. You is loud. I own, Nothing. he own, Everything. that's all they need to know, they be loud, then they quiet down. <laughs> oh, he's so cute, praise the Lord. I own, Nothing. he own, the reason it's hard for you to let stuff go is because you think it's yours. When you get the revelation that everything you got ain't yours no how, you will let it go. Let me tell you something. I had bought me a very expensive watch in Buffalo years ago. Extremely expensive. A man walked up to me, a young guy walked up to me. He said, Prophet, I like that watch. I said, good. <laughs> I walked off and I heard a voice say, give it to him. I said, that's a lying spirit talking to me. I saw saying, Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. <laughs> I, used, I, used to wear, I used to wear a whole bunch of jewelry. And I noticed that when people tell me they like it, I give it to them. So you know how you fix that? Don't wear none. <laughs> I know that's right. That's how you fix that. So, the Lord said, give it to them. I give it to them. I ain't seen that guy no more. I think he pawned it or something. <laughs> Years later, a woman calls me. She said, Prophet, we going to the store. I said, okay, where we going? I'm going to the jewelry store. Okay. What we going for? She said, I want to buy you a watch. I said, well, let me tell you something. If you plan on getting me a Timex, <laughs> ain't no need me going. Because see, God ain't going to have me give up a watch like that and give me a Timex. <laughs> see, if I sold a Mercedes, I don't expect back no Nissan. <laughs> so, I let it go. The watch you told me, the lady come, she said, well, listen, I want you to come to the store and I want you to buy whatever watch you want, whatever one. I said, you sure you want to tell me that? She said, whatever. <laughs> I go in there and it's the watch I got on now. And can't nobody tell me they like this and can't nobody think the Lord going to talk to me. <laughs> I bind whatever you come to say in Jesus' name. The blood is against you. I was sitting up here in the pulpit today. Bishop pointed at it. I say the devil is a liar. <laughs> say hallelujah. hallelujah. 
But when I let it go, she took me in there. She said, I want you to get whatever you want. And there was a Rolex in there that I wanted. She said, you get it, I'm buying it. It's paid for. God blessed me with that because when he told me to let go of something, I let it go. But the reason I was able to let it go is because I know that I own, he owns. I'm sitting at home one day watching Kenneth Copeland on TV. Now, Kenneth Copeland, personally to me, he's very boring. But if you need some faith, he going to say, I know my God will make a way for me. <laughs> Welcome to Believe with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. All right. So, so I'm watching it one day and Kenneth say years ago he needed $50,000. And he said to God, I don't know how I'm going to get this money. And the Lord said, you do know how you're going to get it. He said, how, Lord? The Lord said, give. So I go get in the shower, and I hear a voice say, give. I get out the shower to see if the TV was on repeat. <laughs> but it wasn't. So I go back, and I hear it again, give. Now, at the time, I had several cars in the driveway, but I had one car that I really loved. And he said, I want you to give away that Mercedes. I start saying, there go that lying spirit again. I know that voice. I know that spirit when I hear it. And you know, when you don't want to do something, you say, Lord, if it's you, let a cow come in my front yard. And when I look at it, let it say, moo. And if that happened, I know that's what you want me to do. Well, didn't no cow come. But whenever God wants you to do something, he don't let you rest till you do what he tell you. I let it go. I called the preacher. I said, hey, the Lord just spoke me and told me to give you this car. He started crying. I said, well, I'm crying too. <laughs> you know, the Bible says he loves a cheerful giver. He didn't say he don't accept no other kind. He doesn't love a cheerful giver. <laughs> Come on, y'all got to be honest. Every time God tell you to give something, you don't be happy about it. I said, look, I'm going to put the car in the shop. I'm not letting it come back to the house because if it come back to the house, you ain't going to get it. Go pick it up from the shop. I let it go. You want to know why I was able to let it go? Because I own. He own. Now, I, I, I want you to catch this because God brought me here at least this week to break a yoke off of your finances. Now, if you need a breakthrough with your money, I need you to jump up real quick and shout, it's over! It's over. Sit down! <laughs> Somebody shout, more than enough! More than let me tell you something. The money God getting ready to give us, it ain't just for old folk, it's for young folk too. Yeah. My God, look at somebody and say, all my debt, all my debt is, paid is paid off. Tonight. Tonight. See there, y'all don't get excited enough for me. But let me tell you something. If, I felt the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. If you got enough faith to say it, God got enough power to do it. Look at somebody and say, say it till you see it. Can I tell y'all what I just saw? I was in Detroit, Michigan. And in the middle of a service, I saw an anointing hit a certain section. And God told me if that section praised God, something was going to happen. I said, increase is coming. That's what I told him. A man at the time, Detroit was in the middle of a recession. A man, in, well, as soon as I said that, got a phone call from General Motors. And right there in the service, they gave him a job paying him $100,000 a year. Can I tell you what I just saw? He told me to tell this section right here. 
if you praise God, he's going to blow your mind before this week is out. Matter of fact, let me get in that section and praise God. Hey! hey. I said praise him. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I feel a breakthrough in here. I feel a turnaround in here. I feel a release in here. Sit down. <laughs> Somebody shout glory to God. Shout glory to God. Shout glory to God. Glory. 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 Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory. <laughs> I say glory. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm getting drunk. I say glory to God. Glory to God. I feel a breakthrough in here. I say glory. I feel a breakthrough up in here. I feel a release in here. Something is breaking in the atmosphere. Something is shifting in here. Something is turning in here. Something is breaking in here. Glory to God. Ela basso rabande le bekitara. Le de bekeshe. Priest be on zara. Be fanamo kushata. Glory to God. Miracles in this house. Yala ba 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 ba. Yala la 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 ba ho sha. Miracle. Miracle. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I feel a breakthrough in here. I feel a breakthrough up in here. Hey! Yala ba ya ya ya. Yala ba la ba sonde le be kita ya. Brede be Christi be on zolo la ba ho bi ya. Braka da banche. Miracles. Supernatural. Miracles. Hold by. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I feel a breakthrough in here. I feel a breakthrough in here. I feel a turnaround in here. Somebody need to be shouting in your seat. Somebody need to be going crazy. Because there's a release in here. That's a, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Hello, Baba. What a baby. What a shake. Hello, Baba, Baya. Yala Bala Sutalaba Kitaya. Rebelaba Sitalabanda Lalaboho. You come out, shut up. Break up, 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 up. Pow. Somebody praise him in here. I feel a breakthrough. Shut up, 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 up. You need to be shouting like you know your release is on the way. You need to be shouting like you know something is breaking for you. Shout like you know there's a turnaround on the way. Shout like you got the victory. Shout like everything. Hey! Lift your hand. Now look. Who got your money? Where it's supposed to be? Deuteronomy 8 say he gave you what? Power. To do what? Where the power at? Where's that? Where's that? What's the first principle? Always keep God. I own. He owns. Y'all got it? Now, Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Get that quick. Hurry up. Hurry up. Ain't God wonderful? Yes. Look at somebody and say, he's mindful of us. Mindful. 
Mark 11, 23. Hurry up. Ain't God real? Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Verily I say unto you, if you say to this mountain, be thou what? Be thou what? And be thou and shall not, no. shall not, no. shall not. No. Now that's most of y'all problem. Y'all trying to talk stuff if you still got doubt. When you say it, you got to believe. When you say it, it's going to happen just like you said it. Yeah. Verily I say unto you, let's start from the beginning. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this what? Okay. Be thou, be and be thou, the sea. and shall not, no. shall not, no. shall not, no. in his but shall, uh huh, which he saith shall what? He shall whatsoever. He shall have what? He shall have what? He shall have what? One more time. He shall have what? One more time. You have whatever you say, right? Now, y'all ready to y'all ready to access your money? Yes. Who got it? Yes. Where it's supposed to be? Yes. Are you ready to move it from the center house of your house? Yes. All right, put your Bible up, stand up. We're about to move it. Get up! Put your purse up, put your Bible up. You know, put it up, not up and down, up. Like get rid of it. Like you're done with it. Everybody put their Bible up in there. No, no, don't put your Bible in there. Put it away. Put it away. Y'all don't say put it up, huh? You know, when we say put it up, that means put it away. You're done with it. Put it away. Put it away. Say that's the Queen's English, right? Put it away. Say hallelujah. I tell you, young lady, God gonna favor you. I, 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 I want you to remember this day. God gonna favor you. I mean, He gonna give you so many ideas that it's gonna change a nation of people. I'm telling you what I know about the Holy Ghost. I, I, I'm telling you that doctors and scholars will search you out for the information He gonna put in your brain. I'm telling you what I know. You take that to the bank. Now, now, you ready to move your money? Yes. All right, now let me ask you something. How many of y'all ever been to a casino before? Raise your hand. A casino. I didn't say you played, I said you went. <laughs> Some of y'all don't want nobody to know. You know you've been to a casino. <laughs> I've been to a casino because they got good food at the casino. Ooh, the buffet is good. How many of y'all ever seen a slot machine before? Raise your hand. A slot machine. Put your hand down. You got, two, you got two kinds of slot machines. You got ones that you press. But they had another one that got a lever on it. Hold your hand out like you about to pull the lever. Now if you're right handed, use your right hand. If you're left handed, use your left hand. Whatever your most powerful hand is, I want you to use it. And let me tell you something. You folk that got your hand like this, Ain't a, I need you to act like you about to pull something. See, you about to pull enough money to take care of you and your children. Now, I know this don't make sense. I know it's foolish. But God takes the foolish things to confound the wise. Are you listening to me? God will take you to do stuff. I was in, I was in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Lord spoke to me and told me to tell a woman she had a tumor in her stomach the size of a seven-month-old baby. God told me, tell that woman, go home and eat a orange. But don't just eat the inside, eat the whole. She ate that orange, and instead of the orange going to her stomach, it went to the tumor. And the tumor ate on all of the nutrients that was on the orange and disconnected from her body. 
Well, all the doctors had to do was go in and take out the tumor. All because she obeyed a word of a prophet. A woman came to my service in Fort Pierce the other night. The Lord spoke to me. She was going to the doctor. She came on Sunday night. She was going to the doctor on Monday morning. The doctors gave her four months to live. I said, the Holy Ghost told me to tell you, go home, eat some peanuts, and you'll be healed tomorrow. She went home, ate peanuts, went to the doctor. They couldn't find no trace of cancer. A man in Jacksonville, Florida, I didn't know it, he owned the Chrysler dealership. Dying with cancer. Doctors told him to come off of dairy products. He came to me and asked me what to do. The Holy Ghost told me to tell him, go home and eat some cheese. <laughs> His daughter went off on me and said, you're trying to kill my daddy. I said, if he believed God, he'll live. But if he doubt God, he'll die. He went home. He said, what kind of cheese? I said, get extra sharp cheddar. <laughs> you know, extra sharp is good for macaroni and cheese. <laughs> he did it. He's completely healed because he obeyed. God may tell you to do something foolish, but if you do it, it'll change your life. Hold that hand up. I've been doing this for the past year and a half. And I've been seeing it work. And right now I got some things that I need God to do for me. That if God don't do it, it can't be done. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Hold that hand up. Now I'm going to show you what to do. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you how to do it. Don't do it yet. I'm going to just show you. You're going to say money. Wait, wait. See, some of y'all so broke you can't even wait. Some of y'all say, man, I ain't got time to be watching you. I need to get my... Okay, wait, just watch. Just put your hand down. Put your hand down. That's too tempting for you. Put your hand down. Then you're going to say, you're going to say, money cometh to me now. Can you do that? Yes. Hold your hand out. We're going to practice. I tell you, I heard somebody say, I ain't got time to be practicing. <laughs> come on, practice. Real soft. You ready? Shh, come on. Money... To me. Now. Some of y'all missed it. Some of y'all said now nah before you said me. <laughs> Somebody just said money come now. No, you wanted to come to you. <laughs> Try it again. Practice. Come on. Money come to me now. Now. Oh, somebody got excited that time. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you. I was in, I was in uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. I won't go back, but <laughs> I was in Lafayette, Louisiana. A couple of weeks before, I was at Richard D. Hinton Appreciation Service. They asked everybody to give $500. Well, I didn't give it because I felt like the Lord wanted me to give it. I just gave it because I knew everybody was watching me, so I gave it. <laughs> but you can't give and not get a harvest. I needed God to do something for me. If I'm lying, God will kill me dead. I gave... $500. And I got in my car and I said, money coming to me now. I mean, I'm going to tell you, I do it so much, I be in the car riding down the street, windows be down. Somebody come up next to me. I said, you broke? They say, yeah, I'm broke. I said, do your hand like this. They say, money. I said, this is what you do. Money coming to me now. And by the time they get done, I done, I done drove off. Say amen. <laughs> but long story short, let me tell you something. I, I pulled it. A couple of weeks later, I was in Lafayette, Louisiana. A woman walked up to me. She said, Prophet. I said, yes. She said, do you mind if I give you $50,000 cash? I said, you don't never need my permission to give me $50,000. <laughs> Look at somebody say, bring me the money. Bring me the money. Hold your hand up. Now, look on the left and your right and say, this poor. Come on, come on, tell them, this pool, this pool is, changing my life. is changing my life. 
broke. I'll never be broke. Another day in my life. Day in my life. It's, my it's my time to get everything, to get everything. That, belongs to me. that belongs to me. Now listen, when you pull, I want you to know that angels are released. Tomorrow night, some of y'all are coming in here with testimonies. I just need somebody to believe that. Tomorrow night, folk gonna come in here with testimony of unexpected money. Slap your neighbor and say, he talking about me. Money! Coming to me. Shout about it. Hey! Come and look at somebody and say, I feel another pool. See that pool? That pool was for all your debt. I decree that the next house you buy, you paying for it cash. If you got enough faith to say it, God has enough power to do it. He was in my service in Chicago. Pastor Pete, that, that fellow y'all see shouting all the time. He was in my service in Chicago. I told him to give a certain amount of money. He gave it. The next day, got a phone call. A man sent him $5,000 because he obeyed the word of a prophet. My sister just got married. I think I brought my sister here one time. She done got married on me. Some guy that's supposed to be coming around helping the ministry, next thing I know, he done married her. I say, the devil is something else, ain't it? <laughs> he told me he was coming to help me. Next thing I know, he done married my sister. But that devil's sneaky, ain't it? Praise God. <laughs> He moved from St. Louis, Missouri, went to Jacksonville. He left his job, left everything behind a woman. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Came to Jacksonville, didn't have a job. In a service, I walked up to him and told him to give a certain amount of money on Thursday. It was a Thursday night. I said, I want you to give this amount of money. He gave it. On Friday, got a phone call. In America, we have a big grocery store called Winn-Dixie. He got a phone call. Well, when Dixie in their buggies and on their carts, they have advertisement, little, little advertisement stuff in the buggy and, and, and all over the store. Well, there's a company over that. The woman who ran all of the Win Dixies from Florida, down South Florida, all the, way, all the way to West Alabama, got sick and resigned and offered her position to him. Y'all quiet in here. And see, y'all keep thinking God need a lot of time to bless you. In America, we had this girl named Gabby. Y'all remember Gabby, the one who went to the Olympics? You know, nappyhead Gabby. You know what I'm talking about. Gymnastics Gabby. When she went to the Olympics, she was poor. Her mama house was in foreclosure. But by the time she left, she left with a $91 million contract. Because her gift made... That first pool was for all your debt. This pool is for the money that's going to hit your account now. Money! Coming to me. Shout about it. One more time. All right. That first one was for your debt. That second one was for your now. This one is for everything you're going to have in the future. Your children going to live off of this money. Your grandbaby's going to... Y'all ain't talking to me. Look at your neighbor on your left and your right. Say, this is it. This is... Tell them this. Y'all excuse me. I feel something up in here. I feel a breakthrough up in here. Tell everybody on your roll, say, this is it. This. (laughs) 
Now, if you see somebody next to you that ain't pulling, when you get your money, don't get them none. You tell them you had a chance to get yours. Y'all ain't saying nothing. My barber, I got a barber who cut my hair. He was in a service, right? And he would pull, and he pulled. I told him to give a certain amount of money, and he pulled. He left service and went and pulled for real. You know, he like went to the casino. I'm telling the truth. And hit the jackpot. Somebody said, was that God? Sure was. He reigns on the just and the unjust. Now, I ain't telling you to do it because you know better. Amen. But you know, God will bless you even in your ignorance. Yes. Now let me tell you something else, and y'all might get mad at me before you do this last pull. God gonna give us money, right? Yes. Hello, he gonna give us money, right? Yes. Right? Yes. But I wanna let you know something real quick. If you ain't a tither, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> if you ain't a tither, all you are doing is the exercise. My God, when you don't tithe, you curse with a curse. My God, the weave in your hair is curse. If you bought weave with money you didn't pay tithes off, you walking around with curse weave. Coming, if you a tithe, you ought to be shaking your head saying, this blessed weave, this weave is blessed. This weave is blessed. Come on. Look at somebody and say, this is, this is it. Now look, I want to do me a favor. Listen to me. You just doing this don't get the results. Hebrews 4 and 2. The word not being mixed with faith profited them nothing. You got to believe that this pool is doing something in the spirit realm. That angels are being released from the four corners of the earth and money that you don't even know about. Come on, I need y'all to talk to me. Now listen to the revelation. I didn't say money come, money come meth. We wanted to keep on coming. And you don't got to be in church to do that. When you get home tonight, as soon as you walk in the door, before you do anything, you need to say, money coming to me. My God, tonight when you get out in the parking lot, they're going to think something wrong with you. As soon as you open the door to your car, it's time for a new car. As soon as you open the door, the next car you buy, you paying for it. The next building that new life bill is going ain't gonna have no mortgage. Y'all quiet in here. I told a pastor in Houston. He was building a church. I say, if you do what I tell you, you ain't gonna have no mortgage. He did what I told him, but I could tell he didn't believe me. I say, I want you to go buy this property right here. He said, the church going to get mad. I say, go buy that property and tell them God told you to buy it. And if the church gives you any problem, anybody who speaks against you is going to die. <laughs> he went and bought the property. Cost $1.2 million. I say, pay for it can. That's the money you got in your account right now that you're saving to build your church. Saw it by the property right now. And if anybody give you a problem, tell me. He bought it. I say, sit on it. Nine months later, they built a Walmart across the street. Well, if Walmart is in the area, 
businesses are going to pay you a certain amount of money because they want to be where Walmart is. Y'all quiet in here. They build Walmart and they want to put a, either CVS or Walgreens across the street. He only paid $1.2 million. They offered him $13 million. Wait, the church costs $7 million. Guess what? He going in and paid off. I prophesy that from this day forward, whatever new life touch will never have debt. It's going to be, I need somebody to shout in here. It's going to be paid off. Come on, look at everybody in your row. Say, don't be playing with me right now. Tell them I'll talk to you later. Come on, tell them I'll talk to you later. I need to get this money. Now. More than enough. Too much. Overflow. Coming to my house. Win. 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 Money. Coming to me. Shout about it. Shout. Shout. Shout about it. Praise him like you got it. Praise him like it's on the way. Praise him. Praise him in here. Hey. Now wait. I hear you, Lord. The Lord usually only let me do it three times, but he told me to do it one more time. When you do it this last time, I want you to do something you ain't done all year. Just come up with some kind of praise you ain't done all year. You cute folk, I don't care if you cute. If, if you ain't never did this, just go, whoo. Do something. You want to do jumping jacks? Do jumping jacks. Do something you ain't never did before. I promise you, slap your neighbor, say tomorrow. tomorrow. See, I need people with crazy faith. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at somebody shout, tomorrow. Somebody say, move, money, move. In my direction. Now. Now listen, I want you to believe something going to break for you. Matter of fact, I got enough faith to believe by the time you get home tonight. Somebody say tonight. tonight. Things are changing. Things are changing. For, me. For me. Right now. Right now. You believe that? Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. Y'all ready? Every piece of property you got going to be paid off. Every debt you got going to be paid off. Every student loan is going to be paid off. I got crazy. Look at your neighbor. Say, don't mess with me. I'm going to tell y'all something. We done broke something in the spirit realm. I feel a veil been torn in the Holy Ghost. My God, you're about to be blessed. Your money is on the way. Your breakthrough is on the way. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Glory to God. I feel. Yes, sir.
I want to dance real quick. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is the last time you're going to see me like this. Tell them, this is the last time you're going to see me like this. This is the last time you're going to see me depressed. This is the last time you're going to see me in despair. This is the last time you're going to see me where I am. God's getting ready to give me what's mine. It's my time. It's my season to get what's mine. Say, ah! Somebody scream. Hey! Now look. We got two services tomorrow. We got a noon day at 12. Bishop is preaching. I'm going to be here because I want to hear what's in his mouth. We got a word tomorrow night. You don't want to miss neither one of these services. I promise you, as the, as, as the first one to speak in this conference, every word this week is going to confirm Remember what I told you? It's going to confirm what God has been saying. Everything going to be in alignment with each other. Are you listening to me? We are a Baba Shy. I'm telling you, God is getting ready to bless us like you ain't never. Can I tell you something? That's why you've been so frustrated. God told me to tell you, frustrations in the natural are contractions in the spirit. I don't hear nobody talking to me. Slap your neighbor, say there's a baby about to come forth. That's why the devil is mad. That's why he wants you to get upset because you're right at the break. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Don't bother, me. Don't bother me. Don't mess with me. Don't, mess with me. Don't, get, in my way. Don't get in my way. I got to do something I ain't never did. Because I'm going to get this. Get Tell him I done missed too much. Miss too much. Tell him I'm, I'm behind time. I should have more money. Have more, money. more houses. More, more land. More it's, my it's my time. Money. to me shout 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 glory prize 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 Praise them in here. Praise them for your release. Praise them for you. Lift your hand. Do not miss tomorrow night. I got some more principles I got to share with you. And I don't want you to miss it. I declare to you tonight 
that wherever your finances was, you just went to another tax bracket. Every business owner in this room today, I promise you after today, your clientele, your everything I'm telling y'all ain't got, but I'm telling you, if you believe it, just lift your hands and say, he talking about me. You about to have so much money, you coming off of your job. Y'all ain't got no faith. Y'all ain't got no faith. Here come our shot. Here the boss soda behind. Lift your hands high. I'm going to do this quick. Went over for about eight minutes. It's 10.04. I'm going to be done at 10.12. I'm not going to miss what God's about to do. There's a release in here. Don't miss what's in this house. The Bible says, given it shall be given. Good measure. Press down. What? And what? Shall what? Shall who? Shall who? Tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor. There's a man looking for me. Look at somebody and say, God is talking to somebody about me. Lift your hand. I'm going to do this quick. I'm going to do this very quick. I'm going to do this very quick. I hear the Lord saying, something to me and I want you to hear it quick and I want you to obey it and, and don't fight it don't, don't, don't let God have to explain it to you just move, somebody shout move. move I hear the Holy Ghost saying Psalm 70 and in Psalm 70 it say make haste the Lord told me to challenge every person in here every, per every person in here he ain't talking to everybody but he's talking to everybody in here that need God to make haste and who got it I'm about to get out of here because when that clock hit 12, I'm done. The window is only open for the next couple of minutes. It's just like Noah and the ark. When God shut the door, guess what? See, it's the same thing in the realm of the spirit. Some of y'all wonder why you give and don't get a harvest. It's just like a man who tried to have a baby at the wrong time. A woman can only produce at a certain time. Hello, hello, hello. He can sow as many seeds as he wants, but if it ain't her ovulation, period, they ain't going to get no result. Some of y'all give seeds, but you don't give seeds in the right season. Oh, that's good what I just said. Some of y'all plant seed, but you don't wait on the atmosphere to hit a certain ramp. See, slap your neighbor and say, we done hit something tonight. <laughs> Look at somebody else and say, we done hit something tonight. <laughs> you can hesitate. You can think it's a joke. You can think it's a game. You got six minutes. Lord told me to challenge every person in here, every person. I'm going to be the first to do it. I'm going to get my credit card, uh, credit card, catch it, whatever. I don't want you to miss what's in this house. He told me to challenge every person in this room that'll get a $70 seed in faith that whatever has been on hold, he's getting ready to make haste. He's going, look at, look at Psalm 70, make haste, oh God, to deliver and make haste to what? Help. How many folk need God to deliver and how many folk need help? Whoever you are, you got about five minutes. I ain't going to get no line. You got five minutes to get it quick and come drop it on the table. The quicker you move, the quicker God's going to be. Move quick while that anointing is in this house. Hallelujah. Just play some. Mm, church, church. Not nothing song. Yeah, yeah. Right, move. No, no. Just, just. Just move. 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 All over this room. All over this room. I feel a blessing. I feel a blessing. Come on. I feel a blessing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey. I, I feel, feel a blessing. Come on. I feel a blessing. Hey. I feel a blessing. 
Shower. Showers of blessing. Come on. Showers of Miracle. blessing. Hey, it's coming down from above. It's coming. Down from above. It's coming. Down, 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 down. I feel a blessing. I feel a blessing. Come on. I feel a blessing. Come on. I feel a blessing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Hey. I feel a blessing. Come on. I feel a blessing. Hey. Shower, come on, showers of blessing. Oh, it's coming down from above. It's coming down from above. It's coming down, 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 down. I see a blessing. Come on, come on. Oh, yeah. Come on. Hey. It's coming. It's all around me. It's all around me. Hey. It's all around me. Hey. It's all around me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Come on. It's all around me. Come on. It's all around me. Come on. It's all around me. Shower. 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 It's coming. It's coming. 